Welcome, welcome everybody. We are in the session one of uh, our class, and honestly, uh, I'm very much excited and honored to uh, run that program. But that is the first time we do that um, for people who are um, geographically located in the uh, European region, and <clears throat> I think. We are dealing with new type of opportunities in today's world where uh, no matter where you live, you can uh, get a job uh, somewhere else, I mean, in the world. So we are getting outside of the local uh, job market, and which is a very exciting part. And we are kind of pioneering that thing. So we are bringing our class from the United States, from Silicon Valley, uh, from the very first uh, software testing school in the world. We bring it uh, online, uh, specifically targeting the countries of so so uh, former Soviet Union, and uh, specifically targeting uh, people who, who are Russian-speaking, but they want to work uh, in uh, United States, Canada, uh, in European Union, maybe in in the local companies, but uh, companies which work for uh, foreign uh, clients. So I feel myself like I'm pioneering something new again. So that is what I feel. It's not like in another class, uh, which we no normally run three times a year here out of uh, Silicon Valley. So guys, uh, we are in session one and um, you did have a homework and we will start with your homework. So um, you were supposed to watch the pre-recorded video, uh, learn the questions and answers for session one, uh, then do the survey, and uh, also watching the James Beck video. Let me ask you guys, did you watch the James Beck video and uh, did, you, did you enjoy it or whatever, whatever your opinion is on on that video. Exciting. It was cool. Yeah, it is a, it is a kind of life changing thing. I would say it takes one hour, 40 minutes, but it is a, it is a classic thing. And uh, mm, yeah, and that gentleman is, uh, is very well known uh, in the world of software testing here in the United States. And he he is lecturing all over the world. So I think um, it's a good one. Okay, so primarily I, I wanted you to look at that, uh, to watch that video um, so you get better idea of what software testing is about and uh, mm, to see the practical kind of aspect of that because if you read books, so books are primarily academic in nature. So, and uh, James Beck is, uh, 100% you know, uh, grounded and he, he deals with practical issues. Okay, so then let's go to the quiz. Yeah, go to your quiz. It is here on my screen. So let me refresh the window. And uh, we have uh, 93 people who participated in the quiz, which is not bad, considering how many of you are in the class, it's very good. Um, so let me go there. We will go um, answer by answer. So question by question, answer by answer. And I have notes for you. Where is my file here? Yeah, I have notes. And um, so in my notes, it starts uh, with a couple of things of generic nature. Okay, let's do it. So, so guys, why are you here? Why are you in that class? What do you expect from that class? Briefly, just one, one sentence, maybe a couple of words. Why are you in that class? Come on. To start new professional life, good job, good. Change my life. 
change my occupation, get a job, change the career, get new job, improve my life, get a job abroad, change my profession. Okay, guys, so my actually purpose um, asking that question was to um, come to the very simple uh, conclusion. So you are not here to in, uh, for entertainment. You are not here out of your curiosity. So you are here to get a job. To get, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, to get a job in uh, software testing, in software testing field, yeah? to get a job. So whatever we teach here, guys, um, is done to get a job. Uh, whatever homework we give you uh, is uh, given so you can get a job. Getting the job is the, the goal, okay? The goal. the goal um we have different tools we have tools and tools are classes classes are tools so you can you can um, repeat those classes retake them anytime uh you know you can uh, classes recordings so you you can use recordings of previous classes recordings uh we have resumes are tools um what our projects are tools. Um, I mean, whatever, what, whatever, whatever happens here is is a tool. So that is why we have the policy of unlimited um, repeating the, the class at no charge. Okay, we are not selling classes; we selling the change in your career. Classes are tools, uh, videos, archives, resumes, projects, all that stuff. It's all tools. So you so we better understand where we are. A uh, couple of words about resources. So that is the, the school website. Um, that is the FAQ for your class. You know, I, I mean, most of you know that uh, FAQ link, but just in case. Um, online home is uh, the page where we keep um, three first uh, sessions. Um, and we use that page in our um, regular uh, US-based um, uh, class. So it has homeworks, it has links, it has uh, different things, and just for the first three sessions. So you might find it uh, helpful when you do the homework, at least for the first three sessions here. Um, we have that forum where you have to register. We have that forum. Um, and... Um, when you register there, it asks you some random question, and here is the answer, guys. Whatever you say will not work unless you put that 4970 El Camino thing in there. Okay. We <coughs> do our homework, again, for a couple of sessions, for a couple of sessions. So later on, we will use uh, Jira, but so, so far we will be uh, posting your answers to the questions on the forum. And um, on that forum, we have uh, specifically. Okay, let's let's go there for a second. Uh, copy. On that forum, we keep uh, useful stuff, uh, and specifically that uh, um, interview questions, interview questions sub forum, where um, we elaborate elaborate answers for most uh, frequently asked most important um, interview questions and that is why um, that link here the url we give it to you right here yeah so you know where it is and um, in that same forum uh, you go to online in that online um, part, so you will post your test cases and bug reports and all, all the stuff which is coming, coming soon. Okay. Now, um, registration. So if some of you, maybe a few people, I don't know, uh, are not registered yet, so that is where you create the account. And unless you create the account and we 
authorize your account, you will not have access to the class page and the video archive. And that is exactly the class page. That is where we are here. Yeah, that is the class page, SU1. Okay. That is your class page. Mm, what else? So we have two chats for your class. So one chat is uh, called final and another chat is called informal. So um, final we use only when we are in the class. Informal we use in between classes. Okay. So we do not mix those. Um, a couple of rules. So it is not a social network or a social gathering. So you do not uh, deviate from uh, what we learn in the class. So it is given for discussing the class related issues, only the class related issues. Um, no spam and no distraction. So when you put smiles, when you say thank you, uh, things like that it could be nice, but you are distracting at least 100 people, you know, uh, and they do not want to be distracted. Okay. So no, no spam and no links to third party resources without my approval. Okay. So nobody came to that chat, you know, to get links. Uh, from uh, someone uh, who who is not directly related to the class we we have. Okay. That is the one. Now, guys, uh, guys, coming to the quiz, which we are uh, going to look at. When it comes to interview questions, and the quiz is built out of interview questions, um, you you have to understand that correct answer, correct answer, uh, might not or is not uh, good enough in the interview situation. It's good enough if you, are, if you are at work, but when you compete with other people, so we have to beat the competition. And the assumption we make is that competition is good. So we are not compete with people who have no idea what they are talking about. So we compete with decent people and uh, to beat decent people, we have to come with something better than just correct answer. That is why on the school forum, we have those 20, uh, 21, I'm not sure, uh, questions which are elaborated. And we will uh, go to, to that uh, sub forum uh, systematically. So I will show you um, how question, how answer should be elaborated. So we beat the competition. And that is when what you think about when you ask yourself, am I coming with a good answer? Correct answer is not good enough. I mean, correct answer is good, but not good enough. So it, it, it could be better if you if you want to get a job. So you ask yourself, how can I make it better? Or you ask my, me, for example, for, the, for that purpose. Um, another thing I wanted you to uh, look at is uh, it is called four level, levels of learning. It is a kind of... Um, pedagogical educational concept, which says there are four levels of uh, learning the information. So the first level, it's called recognition, uh, uh, means student cannot solve the problem without outside help. You can say, oh yeah, Michael told us about it. Yeah, but can you do it? Not really, someone should help you. So that is the level number one level recognition level uh, at which you get no job nobody gives you a job if you cannot do anything without outside help now um, the the level which you want to be at is called uh, reproduction level level number two reproduction you can solve the problem yourself you can do it Okay. For example, I teach you how to change a tire on your car or some anybody's car. And one thing you just watch how I do it, and uh, that is first level. But if you can go and change the tire on a car yourself, so now you are at the reproduction level. So you, you we can hire you to change tires. 
The next one is called uh, cre subjective creativity level, level three, subjective creativity. So you can solve problems which are subjectively new. I mean, <laughs> they are new to you. You didn't, didn't do it before, but uh, you have enough skill, knowledge, flexibility, and, and so on, so you can do it. For example, uh, you changed cars made in the uh, Soviet Union, and now you have a car made in Germany. And it's a different type of car, different type of tire, but you figure out how to change the tire. You are at subjective creativity level. It's called expert level. Expert level. It is not what you're going to be right after, uh, at, uh, right after the school. Eventually you will. So, guys, it is enough to be at the um, reproduc uh, reproduction level to get a job. The difference the road in between no job and uh, having a job is uh, practice and hard work okay you practice if you do not practice if you do not apply hard work you stay at the level one no job okay when you apply practice when you apply hard work so then you move to the next level and you get a job and when you become an expert level uh, professional, which might happen very fast. It doesn't doesn't take ten years. It could could happen in one year or maybe two years, depending on who you are, what's your education, what's your enthusiasm level, and hard work, and so on. So that is the level where you can get a job internationally, any country. Okay, you 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 go you go and get a job there because you are at a very high demand level. Okay, now guys, uh, before we jump on the questions and answers just making sure we are on the same page <clears throat> are, are you with me guys no questions uh, or any questions so far okay Okay, so so far we have just yes, yes, yes. Okay, keep going. Okay, I, I keep going, no problem. Um, <clears throat> so, um, how we do the homework? Uh, just the last thing. Um, homework. Okay, let me let me go back there. Um, I will go back to. Mm, to the online home page, the one we use in our US class uh, to show you how we do the homework. Okay. Come on. Yes. So we go to session one. And uh, so it's uh, to prepare to session one you do the homework so you watch the video you learn questions and answers you take the survey you watch the james back video and you watch a recording of that same video in the previous class so you basically you you look at uh, re recording of what we are doing pretty much uh, right now so I will create um, a similar page just for your class, but so far for the first three sessions, you can use that page. The, um, for tomorrow, okay, you do the homework, you watch the pre-recorded video, uh, you look at this, so you, you finish the whole thing, okay, and then you watch the session which we did on uh, January 10th. Uh, by the way, um, they are coming with uh, um, that session and uh, okay january 6 and january 10 and uh, january 11th i believe they all are coming with russian subtitle i was practicing how to do subtitles so they have subtitles if you want to okay so that that is how we do the homework good um 
in the ideal world. So you might not have enough time to do it today or maybe tomorrow, but uh, it is still waiting for you. So you do it when you do have time. <clears throat> hey guys, finally, we are coming to the, we are coming to the quiz. So let's go to the quiz. So what makes software career attractive to you? Um, and we have, let me refresh just in case. It's a page, maybe a few more people answered. I don't know. Um, how many? 95, okay. Um, it allows me to make more money. Uh, jobs are safer. I enjoy working in IT slash high tech environment, which is our preferred answer. answer. Uh, it employs my natural talent and passion for perfection, which is also a good one. It's a good one. Um, what we normally suggest <clears throat> when it comes to motivation, uh, you do not mention money. It doesn't mean money is not important. It means money in, shouldn't be the primary motivation you have when you choose your profession. That is, that is the idea. So you have to be excited about that job. You have to be willing to grow in that uh, job. You have to be, how to say, <clears throat> you have to be motivated, not just by money and, and so on. So money is not a good answer, <clears throat> even though it might be the actual reason which moves you. So just don't mention. Then when it comes to safety, um, there are no safe jobs in today's world, guys. Safety is not coming from uh, what exactly you do. It is coming from how good you are at what you do. So let's say recession comes, layoffs come. Bad, bad time comes, uh, people who are skilled, people who are senior level and, and uh, above, so they are always okay. The people who are suffering uh, mostly when um, we run into bad economy are people who are very new, uh, college graduates, people with uh, no or little experience. So they are the primary uh, victims of uh, bad economy. Okay, so. Coming back to our notes, and notes will be available to you. Yeah. Um, so, what makes career at attractive to you? So, job safety comes from your skill level, not from employer. Okay. Never bring money to your answer. That is just what I told you, but at least you have those points I made mm, here. Um, now, define negative testing. When you think about negative testing, um, uh, it, 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 it is a pair of two things. So we have negative testing versus positive. Negative testing by itself has no meaning unless there is a positive. So negative and positive, okay, then uh, that, that pair, that couple, okay, makes, makes lots of sense. So uh, the most important, the most critical uh, testing which we have to do and which we start with is positive. Positive testing means, I mean, we have to make sure that if a user does what user is supposed to do, um, the system works. The system delivers uh, the expected behavior, the intended behavior. So if I want to log into my account, I will log into my account. I just have to provide valid combination of um, login and password and the system will log me in. So negative testing is different. So negative testing says, yeah, but what if user doesn't do it right? What if user, uh, uh, let's say, what if instead of zip code, I put my last name? What if when I specify my um, email, uh, I miss a letter? Or whatever. I mean, what if I put uh, um, um, uppercase uh, letter O instead of zero in my zip code? What's going to happen? So what if user doesn't do it right? 
So the system is expected to handle that nicely, okay, gracefully, <clears throat> without uh, weird messages, without crashing, without uh, giving uh, people kind of negative uh, experience <clears throat> in uh, using the software application. So, and we have um, four answers here. So, negative testing is aimed at showing that software handles properly situations in which user acts not as user is supposed to act. Okay. So, we are not saying that user is an idiot and we have to kick him out. No, it's not what we are saying. We are saying the system should handle it nicely, no matter how, uh, how much he is a, a, an idiot. Or maybe it's not him who is an idiot and the people who think he is an idiot. Okay? It is not how we approach that. Software should handle situations like that nicely. Um, we have, uh, let me see, do we have anything on that? Um, uh, yeah, on the forum. Okay, let's take a look. So, elaborated answer. Elaborated answer comes with a couple of points here. So, first, the definition aimed at showing that software handles properly situations in which user acts not as user is supposed to act. That is the definition. But we want to be better than definition. We want to be better than other people talking about the matter. So, we are saying <clears throat> negative testing makes no sense if positive testing fails. You have to, you have to, you have to think about it, guys. If I cannot log in into my account with valid combination of login and password, if I cannot do that, I don't care if when I type the password, it is it is shown in bullets or it is not shown in bullets. Okay, I mean it is important that password is hidden, but if I cannot log log into my account. I don't care about a password field and uh, is the password hidden or not. I just stop testing right there. I'm saying, look, unless that uh, thing, the positive thing is working, I don't care about negative. So th that kind of logic. Um, so negative testing is to be done after positive. Um, in a lack of time situation, let's say we have not enough time to do uh, positive and negative, which is, guys, 100% of the time. We never have enough time to do everything. So, in lack of time situation, which is normal, um, we will minimize or completely skip negative testing for the sake of positive testing. So, positive testing is much more important. Um, so, then, uh, 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 negative testing results in more bugs than positive testing of the same time. Because uh, negative testing is primarily being neglected. Yeah, on, on, on one hand. Uh, um, on the other hand, um, developers do a lot of positive testing. When developers uh, create uh, software, so they make sure, they also make sure it is working. And developers primarily are focusing on positive testing. So positive testing is done by developers. It is done by testers. It might be done by sales and marketing people trying to figure out what the software is about. Management might, might be playing with software uh, for, for whatever reason. So they all are doing positive kind of uh, scenarios. Um, the volume of negative testing is much larger than volume of positive testing um okay let, let me ask you so far are you with me do you understand what what, what we are talking about okay okay um coming to the idea of uh, negative testing volume so number of tests, negative tests, uh, being um, more, uh, sometimes dramatically more than uh, number of positive test cases. I will give you an example um, with, um, let's say, 
Oh, yeah, we have it here. Yeah. Zip code example. Zip code example. So, uh, zip code field. So, what are the requirements for zip code field? What we know? We know it, it accepts five characters. And all the characters are digits. It, it should be dig all digits, um, in US at least. And, and that zip code should be an existing zip code. It, uh, you cannot put, let's say, zero, 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 zero. Yeah, it should be an existing zip code. And then uh, what are the test cases? So what the tests in that case? So what, what, what am I testing? I'm saying, okay, I'm trying the uh, five digits existing zip code. 94085 is uh, in Sunnyvale, California, where uh, my office is located. And what, what do I expect? Um, I didn't say, uh, okay, let me, let me, oop. okay, let me show you um, what it is. So here I will say ID of the test case. Here I will say title, or let's say purpose. Uh, or purpose. Sometimes it is called description. All three, no, nobody will do more than one, but could be called title or purpose or description. Then um, that is the instruction. Instruction. So what, what to do? So I am doing that in kind of minimalistic way, guys. So just for, for, for the purpose of illustration. Um, that one is... Uh, expected uh, expected result uh, and that one is expected result and that one is uh, just uh, for the purpose of my explanation so in in the in the actual test case you will not do positive negative or whatever so expected result and so we are planning, we, we are not executing, so I do not need more information. So ID, title, uh, instruction, and what, what I expect. So when I do five digits existing zip code, so what I expect, it, the, system, the application accepts that. But then, I go, and that is positive. And for one positive, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven negatives so far. Okay, let's take a look at negatives. I'm saying, what if it was six digits? Yeah, I have now one more digit. So what do I expect? Um, rejected. So some error message maybe. Or, or it might not accept the six one, is that field. It depends how it is, uh, how the application is uh, you know, supposed to work. In my case, let's say it is somehow rejected. What, it is, uh, what if it is just four digits? So then there should be some error message which says, hey, uh, it should be five, yeah? So rejected. Then non-existent, okay, zero, 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 rejected. And there, there should be maybe an error message which says uh, it is non-existent. And then what if it is not a digit? So what if it is a, uh, what if it is a letter? So instead of zero, yeah, instead of zero, I just put uppercase O, which looks similar. It is not just crossed out, you can see. But um, so it should be rejected with an error message saying uh, digits only. Uh, then we have uh, special characters. So we have three types of characters, letters, digits, and special characters. Special characters are commas, uh, slashes, dashes, and all that stuff. So in that case, I have add sign. Rejected. Okay. Um, now, what if I didn't type those uh, non digits? What if I pasted them? Because sometimes, guys, it doesn't allow you to type, but it does allow you to paste. Okay. You, you will see that in our, in our class. I will show you. There are places where it happens. So now you paste one, you paste another one, and they have to be rejected. So we have overall eight test cases out of which one is positive just as an illustration of the fact that uh, negative uh, tests uh, represent much uh, larger volume uh, compared to positive tests okay I, I hope that is clear guys is it clear
I, I just wanted to to make an illustration showing you that for one <clears throat> one thing to be done not, uh, in in the correct way, there are so many ways to break it down. Yeah. Okay. So that is um, positive versus negative, and the question was about negative, but you cannot talk about negative without at least thinking about negative versus positive. So you might not uh, talk about it if they ask you for negative, you talk about negative, but at least you, you understand the um, kind of relationship. Um, now, so we have the summary here. So makes no sense if positive testing fails. Negative testing is to be done after positive. In lack of time situation, you minimize or skip negative testing. Normally, it is not you who decides uh, that. So your manager will tell you how to look, how to approach that. Um, result in more bugs than positive, more bug reports. Uh, yes, and more, more bugs. And the volume of negative testing is much larger than positive. Good. So we are pretty much done with... Uh, mm, negative testing okay. then we come to very fundamental question guys what is software testing and we might answer that question at different levels so let's say if you talk to your spouse and your spouse says hey uh, for example my wife asks you michael what, what what is software testing and i know she, she, she is busy she is cooking she is uh, uh you know walking with a dog and whatever, she doesn't have much time. And superficially, she asked, my answer is supposed to be superficial. So what is software testing? <clears throat> and uh, I will say, look, some people develop software application and they have requirements where that application is described. So software testing means making sure that whatever they developed is developed along the requirements software application <clears throat> is done along the requirements that is the idea of software testing but in reality uh, if we go to the uh, deeper level of uh, <clears throat> of that so we know that testers are doing more than just um, that type of activity which is called verification so when we look at requirements and we look at the actual software implement, implementation of those requirements, so when we compare them, that is called verification. Because uh, in QA business, we also look at the requirements because requirements have some issues, uh, some problems when they are being developed. Uh, we will talk about the, the issues later on, but. Uh, we have to make sure that the requirements benefit the customer because sometimes they are not um, how to say up up to date. So um, other applications which have similar feature, same feature, identical feature, are doing it differently. So it, it causes confusion when people use your software. Um, certain things which are nice to have are missing. Certain things are obsolete, so we have to do it differently or completely get rid of them, and so on. So we reflect to requirements. And when we look at the requirements, that, that part is called validation. So that is a little bit deeper um, into the what software testing is about. Uh, let me see what you are saying here. The study of software to meet expectations. Uh, Definitely, it is not the study. I, I won't use the word study here. I mean, testing by itself is um, self-explanatory, so it doesn't need the word study here. A main focus here on source code, and the main task is to find and fix the issues. Uh, definitely, that answers answer number one and answer number two are not coming from uh, doing the homework in our class. Assessment of software for compliance with requirements. That is better. Verification and validation for the purpose of error detection. That, that part I don't like. Uh, verification that software doing what it is supposed to do according to specifications and doesn't do what it is not supposed to do. Um, OK, 
can we can be done from the user perspective black box testing look look nobody asks you for black box or white box just stay with the subject they ask you what is software testing if they want if they ask you what type of software testing uh, or what is the difference between black box gray box do not come with more stuff okay software testing is the process of checking software for verification validation finding error. just uh, we do not like the word checking so in 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 our business we are testing we are verifying we are validating we are not checking okay so just exclude the word checking okay let's see mm. do we have anything on our forum for for the, the testing so ask ask yourself uh, toast ad hoc performance black box functionality negative quality gray box test cases it might not have one um, testers plan test case regression no we do not have one okay good um so let's take a look at our notes then <clears throat> in our notes we are saying what is software testing so it's making sure that software application meets requirements or let's say that requirements are properly implemented same thing <clears throat> and um, it begins with having the code to test it is not what you tell people if that is what i'm telling you okay uh, let, let me let me um, put an asterisk here and i will move it up a little bit cut so you do not confuse it with the definition so um there is another um discussion a common common question when you go to an interview um what is the difference between software testing <clears throat> and uh, software uh, uh, quality assurance um or where exactly software testing begins and where exactly software quality assurance begins so quality software testing begins with code being available for testing if there is no code written you cannot do much yeah so but if we go back to your uh, class page and we look at um, questions and answers here so we have more wordy definition of what software testing yeah look at that it says the purpose of testing is verification validation and error detection yeah the purpose of testing is verification validation error detection verification is checking the con yeah the word checking I, I i probably okay i have to fix it here um i don't like it the conformance and consistency by evaluating the results against the pre-specified requirements so verification is about are we building the system right so validation is the process of again the checking i hate it that uh, what <clears throat> has been specified is uh, what the user actually wanted validations are we building the right system detection uh, finding if things happen when they shouldn't or things do not happen when they should um <clears throat> in my um, explanation in my interpretation of that i would say that error detection is a sub product of verification when you have a requirement and you work on making sure that um so instead of checking making sure i would say um something like that so when you are making sure that requirements are properly implemented you run inevitably you run into uh, certain problems so you find errors by doing verification you are finding errors so errors um, when you look at testers from outside it looks like 90 percent of their time they are involved in error detection but it is kind of superficial view um, they are working on <clears throat> making sure that things are done properly but they are not done properly and because of things not being done properly testers run into bug bugs and they write bug reports and they make sure bug reports are fixed and uh, all that you know cycle um 
So error detection is not exactly the purpose. Error detection is a sub-product. Okay, so I, I will probably rewrite that stuff. It's good with pay attention. Okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, go back to my file here. Um, yeah, begins with having the code. <clears throat> in a short, in a short kind of superficial conversation, it is making sure that software application meets requirements. See, not checking, it's making sure, okay. Meets requirements or making sure that the requirements are properly implemented. That is, uh, at today's level, guys, that is uh, enough. So you will get more and more detailed understanding and definition later on, but so far, I would say, it's about requirements. Software testing is about requirements. Um, let me make, um, Maybe one more thing um, here. No requirements. No testing. Okay. No requirements, no testing. <clears throat> it is not for interview uh, situations. It's just for you to understand that if they ask you, how would you test this? How would you test that? You have to start with requirements. They don't give you requirements. It's fine. You come with your um, with your own requirements. You say, okay, let's uh, make some assumptions for the purpose of answering your question. Let's make some assumptions. But if you start testing, or let's if you start talking to people about how to test something with no requirements, guys, it is very unprofessional. In software testing business. No requirements, no testing. Okay. Sometimes requirements might not be given to you in a nicely uh, formatted and edited document. They might be in the air. They might be in conversations. They might be in talking about somebody else's application uh, and how we want to make that same feature better. You know, but developer cannot develop code without requirements think about this this way when developer writes the code yeah developer has an idea of what he wants to receive at the end of that so you need to know that idea to be able to test otherwise you just say i like it or i don't like it and it has nothing to do with the requirements means it has nothing to do with software testing in in the professional sense okay Guys, that is very important, by the way. Um, let me let me make sure we understand the importance of uh, requirements and the importance of um, having the code to be tested. No, no code, no testing. No requirements, no code, guys. No requirements, no code. Uh, let me let me even do this. Uh, no requirements, no testing, no requirements. No code. Yeah, without requirements, there is no code. Okay, that is critically important. So if you understand a couple of uh, basic things, guys, nobody will ever confuse you when it comes to going to an interview, talking to um, talking to other people, and that is exactly where. <clears throat> Um, we have the difference between people who are in software testing profession and people who are software testing zombies. Okay, zombies have no idea what they are doing. Zombies just learned a couple of sentences, couple of phrases, couple of uh, things, and they have no idea when exactly and how exactly those things should be used. And um, so you are not zombies. Okay, you are conscious people so who, who know what what they do in software testing and what software testing is about and what requirements are about and what is the correspondence between requirements code software testing quality assurance and other things um so so far guys <clears throat> let me see um uh, so far um any challenges, any, 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 anything which looks complicated, because I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, but 
we are all different. We, we might have different ideas of what's simple and what's not. So whatever, whatever, whatever might be of, of a concern, just let, let me know. I will address that and we will, we will move further. Um, is the specification and requirements the same? Um, we, we will talk about that stuff. We will talk about that. Uh, there are different types of uh, um, different types of requirements. So business requirements, technical requirements. Uh, it is something which we um, it is something which we will talk about definitely. You will have very clear picture of that. <clears throat> What about exploratory testing? Why in the world you care about exploratory testing at that specific moment of time? My webinar is not working. If you somehow get out of webinar, uh, you might not be able to, to join it again because the software uh, has some limitations and it is not, um, there are no settings to change. So I tried to make it more open uh, to you know <clears throat> returning you know participants, but normally if uh, you have pretty much like thirty minutes to to come back, so after thirty minutes it will not let you. Then then you have to um, watch the um, recording. Not simple, but okay. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we will go over that uh, same thing again and again and again. We, we are just approaching it. Uh, how uh, about trying Zoom next time? No, <clears throat> we will not do it. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> we will not do it in Zoom. Mm. Uh, is it often that tester does not have requirements at the start of a test? Again, um, Ivan, as I told uh, told you already, requirements might come to us in a very different format. Um, it is not very often um, to have requirements coming as a structured, um, well-done document. It's not very common, especially in agile environment. But um, we learn how to understand the requirements uh, in a, a different format because we, we, we are in that profession. That is that is what we, we do. Okay, So we have conversations, we have meetings, we have other applications which have similar or identical features so we can look at them and we can uh, maybe read their documentation and so on there are so many ways of finding out the idea at least of requirements so that is that is how it works um okay okay um webinar link someone is asking for webinar link guys i don't have it handy so if, if someone gives them the webinar link it will be nice um okay what is software quality oh no i'm sorry we go to the we go to the mm, survey to the quiz so what is software quality? Uh, I, I I want to bring your attention to the fact, guys, that it's not about what is software quality assurance. Okay, it is just quality. What is quality? What is software quality? What is your uh, computer quality? What is your shoes quality? Qual what's quality? So what software quality? And um, so let's see what you are saying here. Software quality is a very subjective thing. And it depends on the client's expectations. Okay, I, I might agree with with subjective thing, but where the hell the client comes from? Where did you get the word client when we talk about expect software quality? Who is the client of software quality? I, I cannot understand that. Really, where, where did you get that one? Tells us how close our software product uh, is to the expected one. Okay. From the customer point of view, it is the satisfaction of his expectations. It is called customer satisfaction. 
So in, in this country, it's called customer satisfaction. It's not satisfaction of expectations, just customer satisfaction. From QA point of view, software compliance with the stated requirements. Okay, so what do we have uh, on our forum here? So first thing, I go there, why? Because it has the most elaborated answers. Software quality, yeah, take a look. So uh, from consumer perspective, it is about uh, customer satisfaction, which is subjective matter, okay. From QA perspective, it is about software being up to requirements, verification, yeah. Software being up to requirements. Um, being 100% up to requirements doesn't make product popular or selling well. See, uh, lots of people who are new to software testing, they think if they do a good job of testing that software application, then everybody will be happy to buy it uh, and the company will make profits and everything. Not really, not really. So people buy it not because of the level of testing. People buy it because of the features uh, satisfying their needs. So um, it's, it, 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 it is not really about the software quality. Uh, inside the software company, why we talk about it? Because when you go to an interview, um, you might talk to different uh, types of you know, um, employees. So you might talk to developer, you might talk <clears throat> to a tester. You might talk to marketing person. You might talk to vice president of engineering. Sometimes president. Uh, if that company is ten people big, you will definitely talk to the president of the company. Yeah. So, for example, I when I worked uh, on campus of soft part of computer school, so it was a company with ten employees. Look, if if we are hiring someone, you will talk to me. You you will talk to the president. You will talk to a few more people, maybe three or four. But definitely, we'll talk to the owner, to the president, and so on. So, um, different people in, inside the company look at software quality differently. So, if you are in QA, to you, quality is about how close it is to the specification. But some people inside the company are pretty much motivated by money, by how, how good that product sells, how profitable is the product, the company overall, and, and so on. So how profitable? And uh, if you talk, if you look uh, at, talk to upper management, if you talk to salespeople, public relations people, marketing, uh, these people are on consumer side. They will tell you, hey, I don't care about your stuff, you know, whatever you do in QA, you do it there. To me, customer satisfaction is what uh, keeps our company in business. So when you talk to people, you have to think about who they are. But you remember, you remember what we uh, said before. We said um, your answer should be better. You think about how to make it better than other people answering that same question. Uh, let me see what I have in my notes on that. Um, Okay, that is just a copy uh, from the forum. Okay, but when they ask, uh, uh, when you answer that question, um, so you bring two uh, different uh, standpoints. You do not say it is a customer satisfaction. You do not say it is about uh, being up to requirement. You bring both, both. Or maybe I have to say one here and uh, two okay two and the rest is just uh, in kind of an extra stuff yeah so first of all it is consumer perspective from consumer perspective it is customer satisfaction from gay perspective it's about software being up to requirement and you can stop right there but uh, when you bring two perspectives guys you beat all the competition already nobody ever does that okay so keep going, keep going, where, yeah, it's here. What is software quality assurance? So that one was, what is software quality? And we did have, what is software testing, yeah, we had. What is software testing? Now we have, what is software quality assurance? 
and software quality assurance is a much broader uh, activity with a different object. So qual software quality assurance looks at the process of software of creating the software. Quality assurance looks not at the source, not at the code as software testing. Software testing works with the code. Software quality assurance works with the, in, with the entire process of producing that application, including the code. And some people will tell you that software testing is a part of software quality assurance. And some people will object. They will say, not really, it is something different. It doesn't matter. Technically speaking, technically speaking, software quality assurance is much broader, so it does include software testing. So, but again, in reality, when you go to the job market, guys, uh, on the job market, software quality assurance and software testing are 100% the same. Nobody pays any attention to any difference between quality assurance and testing. It, they are used by recruiters, by uh, people who are interviewing you uh, as synonyms. They just do not pay any attention. But since we are students of software testing, software quality assurance, um, so we have to understand the difference. Software quality assurance looks at the process. And that process begins from the day one. It, that process begins with the requirements. And um, so, and then eventually it comes to the, um, to the coding and we will, we will look at the software development life cycle. At least uh, today we will look at the waterfall software development uh, model. So you, you will see the place of um, software testing, uh, software quality assurance in, in that. So, so software quality assurance, a set of software development monitoring procedures. Guys, where, where, where are you getting that stuff? Quality steps. At all stages, process of monitoring, okay. Process of monitoring and improving all stages of software development from planning to maintenance of the given software product. Okay. At least that one comes from our resources. Um, so guys, when you answer the questions uh, in our quizzes, okay, let's, let's do it this way. When you answer the questions in our quizzes, you do that um, using our resources, okay? You do not Google, uh, you do not uh, ask your friends, or you do not uh, scratch your head. You just go to our resources and study because we gave you the answers. So it was software quality assurance. Let's take a look. Negative. Um, yeah, what is software quality assurance? The process of monitoring and improving all activities, all activities associated with software development from requirements gathering, design, and reviews to coding, testing, and implementation. From, I mean, from A to Z, okay? That is the software quality assurance. The object of quality assurance is the uh, process of software development, the process, okay? With all the stages in there. And uh, now, we go to uh, pop, 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 pop. we go to the next question. Um, just think about it. Any time they ask you what is software quality assurance, immediately it should trigger that okay, software quality assurance versus software testing. They ask you what is software testing. It triggers the the uh, question. Okay, what is software testing compared to software quality assurance? So you never confuse one with another one, okay? Those questions, they ask you one, but they mean two, or at least you have to mean two. You shouldn't cross the borderline between two. Otherwise, you're gonna get <clears throat> a few more questions and maybe uh, make a very uh, unpleasant experience, you know, uh, impression you know, in, in the eyes of uh, people who talk to you. Software quality assurance, good. What is black box and white box testing? So that part is kind of simple. Um, it depends 
how exactly we do the testing. Um, it's not about our capacity or our ability or, our, or the instruments we have, but it's about the technique and instruments we use. Um, let me ask you guys, uh, developer, if you think about developer, is developer able to do black box testing? Is developer able to do black box testing? <laughs> Some people say no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so black box means testing from user perspective. And developer does black box testing all the time. When developer develops the code, developer should make sure it works. So developer says, okay, let's now Let's run it and uh, pretend to be a user and make sure you, you, you can use it. Developer does black box testing. Uh, it is a part of, of uh, devel development activity. Black box and white box and gray box. And uh, overall, uh, if you think about development time, if you, uh, developer's time, maybe 40%, some people say more than 40% of developer's time goes uh, into testing white box and gray box and, and black box as well. So um, when we think about uh, testing, um, black box, gray box, white box, it is not who does it, it is how it is done, how exactly it is done. Uh, black box is user interface testing, not, not really, not really. Look, I mean, if you want to be in that class, start learning, okay, because uh, you're scaring me. Um, black box, bl black testing, black box testing can be made without access to source code, whereas a white one needs an access. Nobody is asking about white box testing here, honestly. So gi just give me a nice definition of what is black box testing, that's it. Uh, black box testing is based on specification of behavior testing. I stop, stop right there. Uh, testing done without access to the source code and from user perspective. You can, you can stop right here. Yeah. It is done from user perspective without uh, access, uh, without using the access. You might have access. Developer has access, but without using the, that access. So you do not test at the source code level. You test at the user uh, kind of behavioral level. So what do we have uh, in our uh, forum? Let me see. Do we have anything about black box? Um, okay. Ad hoc. Black box. Yes, we do. We do have testing done from user perspective. No access to source code used. Guys, that is the ideal definition. It's not about having access. It's about access not being used. Okay, from user perspective, no access being used. Okay, even though you have it. Details, it's not about who does it. It is how it is done, okay. Bugs are identified and reported from user perspective. Yeah, let's say um, such and such link is not working, okay. You, you do that from user perspective. You don't know why it's not working. You have no idea, but it is not working. Uh, could be manual or automated, still black box. So when you say black box, some people say black box is manual, but if it is automated, it is not black box anymore. Not, not really, but, uh, why? So a, a black box is not about manual or automated. It could be done in automated way, it could be done in manual way. It just depends on uh, being done from user perspective at the behavioral level or being done from source code perspective. That, that is the difference. So that, that is what we are saying here. And let's see what we've got software quality, quality. Okay, black box, white box, okay. Black box software testing is done without access to the source code, without using, okay using access to the source code. White box testing is done with access. 
uh, with using okay, <laughs> access to the code. Bugs are reported at the source code level, not behavior. Um, I can copy that and say copy. I can say here, bugs are reported at uh, uh, behavioral level. Okay, to make it uh, more kind of consistent. White box testing is about how it is done, not about who does it. Developers do, do white box testing, white box testers do that, black box testers might do it. For example, guys, I look at that page, let's see. Okay, and I can say um, um, view source code, okay. Now I, I can look at the source code if I understand JavaScript and HTML and whatever is used uh, to do that, uh, that page, I can find the problem on the page. So you can do it. I mean, even being in uh, black, box, uh, black box testing business, you might sometimes uh, do that. Yeah? So you don't have to be a developer. Black box testing is done by testers, developers, uh, and so on. So it doesn't matter who. So black box testing is done by everybody and white box testing uh, is primarily done by developers and white box testers, but it's not prohibited. Yeah? You are not excluded. If you can do it, you can do it. You know what, maybe, um, who does it? You know, maybe I will remove it. Okay, keep it that way. Um, uh, mm. It is. It is about. It is about how it is done, not about who does it. Okay, let's make it simple. Okay, um, save. Keep going. Um, software development life cycle. Um, in in our class, guys, we we will uh, work with. Uh, what is called waterfall development life cycle and uh, agile development uh, life cycle or development model. Um, we start with uh, waterfall because historically it was uh, the only one actually in 90s. Uh, and still some projects are done with uh, waterfall development life cycle. But then with the introduction of web applications, um, somewhere I would say um, around uh, year uh, 2000, <coughs> pretty much at that time. So um, step by step, the industry started to have more and more agile um, development uh, model. We will again, we will talk about different aspects of that a lot, but today we are limiting ourselves to the uh, historically earlier uh, type, which is, again, still um, alive. <coughs> and things uh, in uh, waterfall development uh, uh, methodology uh, happen in stages, in stages. Um, so people uh, are confusing sometimes the question of what are the stages of software development life cycle with the question of what is the life cycle by itself. So life cycle by itself is the um, project management concept. Project management concept. Uh, let me see if I have. Okay, that, that one comes from our resources. Software development life cycle, uh, CLDC, software, CDLC, yeah, is a conceptual model used in project management that describes the stages uh, in a software or system development um, project. Stage by stage by stage by stage. But stages do not define the uh, cycle. Depending on what kind of project it is, uh, there might be different stages. 
some stages are very common. They are everywhere. Some stages might be specific uh, to the uh, size of the project, to the complexity of the project, to, uh, let's say, government being or not being involved, and uh, so on. So uh, when they ask you what is the um, software development life uh, cycle, um, you, you shouldn't uh, ex explain that in stages because different projects, different stages, different. I mean, it, it is the wrong approach. The approach is it is a conceptual model used in project management that describes uh, the stages of software development. We have maybe better definition here. Um, yeah. Software development life cycle is a conceptual model used in project management that describes the stages involved in an information system, yeah, not software, but information system development project. From an initial feasibility study, feasibility study means do we need that? That does it make sense? Through maintenance. Maintenance is the end of everything. It's done, and we just maintain it. We keep it, keep it running. And the com uh, of the completed application. So um I I, uh, I did see some um, conversation about uh, that link uh, not not being open anymore, requesting some God knows passwords. Forget about it, guys. It's not not exactly the only one. I will remove it. So we have our own link here, uh, which at some point uh, I copy pasted from um, Wikipedia. Why I created my own page? Because uh, Wikipedia changes. It's not you know forever. And I said, okay, I like the definition, so let's take a look. So we have stage one, software elements analysis, then requirements, then um, software architecture called design sometimes, um, then implementation or coding. I don't like the word implementation um, when we do the programming because the word implementation might be used for different um, activities. So let's say, something was developed for Wells Fargo Bank, and now we have to go to Wells Fargo Bank, we have to install it, we have to teach people how to use it. That is also called implementation. So um, when it comes to programming, I, I would, call, I would uh, call it development or coding. So not, not exactly implementation, but some people call it implementation too. Then testing, documentation, uh, which is not as popular as it used to be before. Um, software testing can support maintenance. So we've got some stages here. So you can read um, about certain detail and uh, that is enough for um, first level of understanding of what, what it is. But guys, um, what, I'm, what I want to tell you. So it's good that everybody comes to do the quiz and it is terrible that you didn't study anything. So when you do the quiz, you didn't, you didn't uh, you didn't study that. Describe stages of software development products. Look at that. Software analysis, blah, blah, blah. Hey, no, not really. It is a conceptual model used in project management. You can stop right there. And it would be much better than coming with stages of software development lifecycle, which nobody is asking you about and which is never correct because uh, it depends now on what kind of projects you keep in mind and what kind of projects these people keep in mind and are they the same? No, no way. So what are the uh, common stages of software development life cycle is a separate question. Here you are saying it is a conceptual model used in project management. Yeah. Conceptual model used in, in project management that describes stages involved in information system development project. It is a bureaucratic kind of thing. So we have stages, stage one, now we have management. Management says, okay, we have deliverables, we have uh, schedules, we have people who are uh, willing uh, or able and kind of, you know, eager to control you. Okay, so now they can control, they can manage. That, that, that is why. Okay. Um, what is use case? So use case um, is... Uh, is a format, and we tell you that, by the way, we tell you that. A use case, uh, where is that? Ah, use case is a format 
used by business analysts for specifying system requirements. So um, each use case normally represents completed business operation performed by user. Um, let's say we have um, b uh, banking uh, application um, used by bank tell uh, tellers. Uh, so for creating checking accounts. And um, you, you client comes to the bank and says, I want to open a checking account. So the bank teller runs that application and starts asking questions. And based on the answers to the questions, so it, it is branching and branching and branching. So uh, answer number five, okay, might be done answer one, answer two, answer three, depending on which answer it is. So next one might be these three questions, these two questions, or maybe these five questions. So, and it is branching and branching and branching. And finally, we have the checking account uh, created, but how many checking account? Let's say, uh, if you look at the, the entire variety of checking accounts, uh, which we might possibly create. Checking accounts means conf configurations of checking account based on the answer to the question. So let's say we have 63 different configurations of checking accounts. It means we need 63 use cases. Each use case out of 63 will describe the questions and answers, you know, the sequence which brings bank teller to creation of that specific uh, configuration of test uh, of checking account. You are not going to write use cases, guys. Uh, use cases are uh, written by business analysts. And it is uh, specific to uh, water, uh, waterfall development model. Because in Agile, you are not likely to see use cases. Instead, you will, you will have different um, type of document, user story, which is different. So you are not you are not likely to write uh, use cases first of all because you are not in um, business analysis uh, position and second uh, you are you are not likely to work in uh, waterfall environment most likely you're going to be working in agile environment most of the time so uh, you just need the basic understanding of use case it is a description of what user does. And, uh, and what system tells user, so which question system asks and which answers user provides. So together they create that specific configuration of, of a, let's say, checking account or whatever business task is there. So format for business requirements. Use cases are business requirements, business requirements. And they are done by business analysts, people who understand the business nature of the software to be created, the needs of users. Okay, that is business requirement. Out of business requirements, we, uh, the company will produce more documents. They will produce product specifications. They will produce functional specification. And functional specification is what goes to developers. So they, they, they know what, what to develop. Uh, Exactly. So we will talk about different types of documentation later on. So far, you just understand that use case is a business requirement, one of the possible formats for business requirement. And the specifics of use case are, it is a conversation, kind of communication between user and system in achieving certain goal, which makes sense from business standpoint. Um, from the QA perspective, we have a certain type of testing called end-to-end -end testing. End-to-end -end means, uh, are you, uh, am I able to create such and such business account? Let's do it. Okay. So from QA perspective, we will execute a corresponding end-to-end -end test. So if we have 63 configurations of checking accounts, then we have 63 use cases for 63 configurations of uh, checking accounts, then we will have 63 end-to-end -end tests for creating of each out of 63 uh, accounts. Yeah? Uh, and uh, we are not talking uh, 
about everything in end-to-end -end tests. And, uh, we might have end-to-end -end tests which have nothing to do with use cases, so we are, which are different. But use case from QA perspective, use case is a very good thing to be uh, to have you know, for end-to-end -end testing. Okay, at least uh, partially it will cover your end-to-end -end testing. That is the idea. What do we have in our uh, mm, uh, okay? What is software development life cycle? Conceptual model used in project management, which describes software development process in stages. Okay, and I'm saying waterfall. Don't don't think it's every everything. In stages means waterfall. So um, requirements could be, and um, it is in your mm, it is in your uh, session. No. Yeah, session one questions. When you go to our um, copy of Wikipedia here, uh, when it talks about um, elements analysis, so it says uh, incomplete, ambiguous, or contradictory requirement. Those three words are very important. Requirements could be incomplete, just didn't complete them. Yeah. Certain things are not really uh, written. Ambiguous means you might think about this way or that way. It's not clear exactly how it is. It should be done. Might might be this way, might be that way. And especially, it is dangerous when you have two developers working on different aspects of that. So one developer has one understanding of requirement. Another de developer has another understanding of same requirement. And now they have to write the code. And contradictory. So some requirements might contradict to other requirements. So <clears throat> require, that is about requirements, what they might be. And I actually put it together here for you. I said, okay, requirements could be incomplete, ambiguous, or contradictory. So you focus on that one, one more time. Um, yeah, and it says, do not, uh, when you come with the definition, do not, give names to the stages and uh, do not say, uh, you might say, for example, yeah, it, which describes software development process in stages, for example, just for example, yeah, yeah, you can say that, but you cannot uh, define software development uh, life cycle by stages. Um, when we talk about, talked about black box testing, white box and who does what, so I had that in, um, Example with a developer. So developer does programming, developer does white box testing, and developer does black box testing. Developer does all three. Actually, gray box, yeah? Gray box, yeah? Why not? We didn't discuss gray box yet, but it is also a very interesting concept. You will do, you will do some uh, gray box testing in that class. Okay. Mm. Now, okay, use case, uh -huh. What is the difference between software testing and software quality assurance? And we discussed that software testing is looking at the code and software quality assurance look, is looking at the entire process. But, um, uh, Okay, we discussed that. Let's keep, uh, guys, so far, your, your definitions here have nothing to do with our class, okay? And that is what we have to eliminate in between today and tomorrow, okay? When we meet tomorrow and you're gonna do another quiz, whatever you do should come from our resources, not from, I don't know which trash can you use to, to do that. What is the regression testing? Um, Interesting question. It's a very common question, by the way, when, when you, you, it comes to an interview. It doesn't mean they ask you specifically, but they might ask you, how did you do regression testing? So if you have wrong idea, it will pop up immediately. Um, so developers implement the requirements. Developers are programming. So each, each and every day, developers get to their computers and program and program and program 
And uh, so they modify the code. Their job is to modify the code. And they modify the code in two ways. So they develop new code and they make changes to existing code for whatever reason. So if you have something working today, it doesn't mean it is going to be working after new release is coming. See what I mean? It doesn't mean it is going to be working. They routinely break things down, uh, which is the nature of software development uh, process. And uh, it happens a lot. I mean, a lot. And regression testing is uh, something which we do a lot. That is why, so, um, we have to have a very clear idea of that fundamental type of testing. It's not just one off. It is it is one of the most fundamental type of testing. And um, so let me let me go directly to my records because I guess I, I cannot re read the stuff. It makes me you know to cry when I read what you did in that quiz. Um, regression testing. In, in in your own words, in my own words, making sure nothing was broken as a result of code being modified. That's it. Making sure nothing was broken as a result of code being modified. In the human language, um, if we look at the forum here, yeah, uh, it might come in a more elaborated way if, if it is there at all, uh, regression, yeah? Uh, regression. Let's see. Uh -huh. Block test case require regression. Yeah, we have regression. Yeah, we've got a lot. Look, it says partial retesting of modified program to make sure that new no new errors were introduced while making changes to the code. And just for you guys, I'm saying developing new or fixing existing one. It's not a part of definition, it's just, just for you, just my note. Uh, the word partial retesting is not about the nature of uh, regression testing. Uh, it is the nature of the development process where we just do not have time for complete retesting. So uh, regression testing is not about complete or partial. It's about the purpose. Why we do that? To make sure nothing got broken. But in reality, as a practical matter, it is partial. And that is why um, um, regression testing is being automated a lot, because we, we execute it a lot. It is one of the most frequently um, automated types of testing, because we, we do that for each and every release which comes for testing um, from developers. So details should be done for each new release. But guys, before that release comes to us for testing, it goes through another test called build acceptance test, acceptance. So not each and every build which is created uh, is good enough to be tested. So some builds are rejected. So we get uh, only builds which, are, which have passed the build acceptance test or release acceptance test, whichever you call it. So it's already in testable condition. So it comes to us. Uh, we do not have enough time to test software completely. So some risk analysis is involved. So you ask yourself, what if I spend more time on this or less time on that? Um, so you have to decide which part is uh, worth of your time. Uh, it is second to release acceptance, most frequently executed test. So release acceptance is executed for each release. Regression testing is executed for each release which passed release acceptance. Okay? Uh, and it is very good candidate for automation. Very good candidate for automation because it is repetitive in nature. We do that a lot. Uh, typical mistakes to avoid. Don't say it is done after fixing a bug, because it's not. No matter which uh, reason uh, was uh, you know behind uh, changing the code. Don't say it's after feature was added. Again, both fixing the bug and feature added are modifications of the code. 
So do not narrow down the scope of that. Just say we define the code. Making sure the bug was fixed. It is not. It's a different type of testing. Uh, not about manual or automated or black box or white box. It has nothing to do with that. So when you talk about regression testing, do not bring to the picture if it is manual or automated. Is it black or is it white? Is it gray? Don't, don't do that. It has nothing to do with a specific approach to how you do that uh, type of testing. Okay. Do we have anything else here? Looks like we are done, yeah? Looks like we are done. So guys, um, so far, wow. Okay, what do we have here? Informal, we do not write anything in the informal when we are in the class, just remember. Final. Um, uh, uh, guys, uh, by the way, the language of the chat is English, okay? You do not write here in Russian, practice. So imagine, imagine you you get a job. Um, so you, I mean, and that is the purpose of that class. The language of the chat is English. Uh, requirements are sometimes like a standard, or we get them during testing process. I do not understand what is a standard. Uh, I, I mean, why 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 you use standard here? So requirements is what we are going to implement. Requirements change a lot. The requirements might change every day. You might request, uh, you might write a validation type of uh, bug report uh, asking to, to change the requirements. Requirements change on, on the fly. What is the difference between system testing and functional testing? You don't care. I mean, at that moment, you don't care. So it, you, it will be thousand times more productive if you focus exactly on what we are covering in that session. We will, we will talk about all types of testing which are um, important. And uh, so I, I just do not see any reason to disrupt the, the process. So we have, we have certain sequence of things. Uh, and uh, the more you focus on that sequence, so the, the better the result is, result is going to be. Uh, here, up, 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 um, what is the green box? There is no green box, gray box maybe. I don't know. Uh, we will talk about gray box. Again, guys, uh, maybe you have gray box here. I don't know. Bug use case. Yeah, oh, yeah you, you do have that. You do have that definition. But again, we will come to gray box. Don't, don't worry. So you, you will have very good idea of uh, the difference between black and white and gray. And you will do gray box testing here uh, in our project. And uh, that is why we study Unix in your class and we study SQL. And we, we're going to do REST API testing with uh, Postman. So we, that, that is all about gray box testing. So it is coming, guys. We, we are not going to cover everything in the session number one. Now, um, coming back to the homework. That is what you do, guys. You uh, do the, uh, you watch the video, you familiarize yourself with that website. Um, here is the application. Um, in the video, there's going to be a checklist for user interface testing. So you apply the checklist to that um, form. Uh, you repeat the interview questions, that same, that same uh, file, and then you will use, you will do the survey number two, okay, based on same questions. But you will do it right. You will do it out of our resources. And you will learn what we teach, not just come out of blue, okay. Um, then a couple of things. You create an account with uTest. Uh, uh, we will talk about uTest. Just remind me, uh, you register at the school forum if you didn't register yet. And that is something uh, which uh, we want you to, well, spend maybe half an hour trying to find whatever you can find without clicking, without typing, without doing any action. Just look at it. Okay. It has 
I would say 40 bucks, 40 things to report just by looking. Okay. And um, so when you are done with that, so guys, you go to the um, previous. Um, okay, online home. So you go to that page, online home page, which I gave you there. And look at the section two. So you can watch uh, January 10 uh, video with, uh, I believe it has Russian, pretty good Russian uh, mm, subtitles. Yeah, look at that. Pretty good ones. If you want to. Um, Okay, so guys, um, thank you very much for joining me today. And um, if you might have uh, questions, so we have the informal chat, so we do not write in the final chat after we finish. If I already have a new test account, it's fine, it's perfect. How to get home page? How to get home page? Uh, again, um, I, I just gave you. I, I mean, we are on the home page here. I mean, really, um, we, we we are on the home page. That that is the home page. Um, I, I I don't know what you mean. Um, and I ha I gave you the file. I'm giving you the file with all the uh, with all the links here. And that file, okay, just in case you do not understand that part, that file is going to be right here. Look, we have session one. Here, here you will have the video, and here you will see the file, the notepad file, which I was uh, editing all um, the entire session. That file link is going to be here within a couple of minutes, actually, after we are done. Okay, more, more questions? Uh, testing is mainly focused on the source code. Uh, um, source code means there should be code to test. That that is the idea. Testing is uh, focused on testing the code. We have to have the code. You can test the source code using black uh, box methodology, gray box, white box, but there should be a code. That is the idea. So we test that code in all the uh, different ways. Uh, further on answer to what's black box testing says, black box done with no access to the source code. Yes, you do not you do not look at the source code. Let's say it's written in Java, okay? You do not look at the Java. You are doing black box, that, that is what it says here. You are doing black box uh, testing of that source code, obviously. Behind all that, there is a source code. Okay, um, so guys, thank you very much. We are done for today. So let me uh, produce the recording, uh, do the subtitles and all the things because we want to have um, English and Russian subtitles for all the sessions in our class. Um, thank you very much. And uh, where is my, hey, uh -huh, it's here. No, I do not understand. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, and we are done for today.